What is up, Cowboys Nation? Your boy Mike Tag here. You see, I'm in the Cowboys cave trying to digest everything that's gone on this season. And I got to tell you, a little bit, little bit surprised. I'd be lying to say if I wasn't surprised at how this season has turned out. Not shocked, but I am surprised. We all knew we had trouble running the ball. We all knew we couldn't stop the run. We're not going to beat a dead horse, but we did zero in the offseason to do it. You have your head coach on a one-year deal. Last year, his contract, that pretty much cripples a locker room. Nobody is going to follow him. They should have just either re-signed him or made a change. You screwed around with C.D. Lamb's contract. You screw around with Dak Prescott's contract, and now we're where we're at. You had no free agent moves. You've got some money left over, and you say all in. You say all this, and to me, it's just another disappointing season for this franchise that has been crippled with disappointment for the last 30 years. You know, let's not forget, this is the same coach, the same team pretty much, except for all the players that we lost and we didn't didn't bring back, but this is the same core that went 12 and 5 the last 3 seasons, disappointed in the playoffs. You think as the owner that you would when you say all in, you'd make the necessary changes to tweak just like all these other teams do, tweak the roster to improve it to make sure you can get over the hump. You look at who the best team is. The best team was the San Francisco 49ers last year. What can we do to get over the hump and compete with them? Did nothing. Did nothing. And it's disappointing. It's disappointing for the fans. You got you got my man Kelly K9 wearing a bag over his head. You got fans wanting to wear bags over their head. You got people like me, diehard cowboy fans that are thinking twice. Do I want to make the investment to fly out to AT&T to get a hotel room to do all this just to look at that product they got on the field? I'm just one of tens of thousands of cowboy fans that are thinking that way now that are season ticket holders. And I can't blame them. I mean, you ha- how could you blame them in any way? And that's really the state that we're in. And I see a lot of talk and fire Mike McCarthy. Fire him. Who are you going to get? I mean, think back to the coaches that this team has had. They're basically, they don't have the hammer. They're not given the hammer. The only time the hammer was given is when the Cowboys hit rock bottom, three, five, and 11 seasons, had to do something drastic, and they went out and got Bill Parcells. And then Jerry screwed that up too by, by taking, by doing stuff without working with Bill Parcells because Bill Parcells was the hammer. He was controlling the roster. He changed that whole roster. I mean, Jesus, they, had, they went to the playoffs with Quincy Carter and Troy Hambrick as their starting quarterback and running back. It's not always about the talent. It's about the culture and what you do for that organization, for that team, and in the locker room. And the culture with the Cowboys has been broken a long, long, long time. And I'm not going to go back all them years. We're not going to revisit history because you guys all know it. But just look at the path. Look at everything that's happened over the past year with the media, with Jerry Jones. And then you're seeing digs with the media. Then now you're seeing Bland coming out tweeting. You've got guys, they're focused on everything but football. You know, showing late to meetings, doing this, doing that. There is no accountability with this team. And again, you can get rid of McCarthy. Fine, let's get a new face. But who are you going to get? Because if you cripple that coach the same way you've crippled the coaches before, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. The, the owner is hiring their coordinators. I mean, Kellen Moore was basically given and told to McCarthy, that's your coordinator. Wade Phillips, Jason Garrett was hired before Wade Phillips was the head coach, and he told him, that's your offensive coordinator. That is not how you run an organization. You're given press conferences, you're given interviews as the owner and the GM. Give me other owners. I couldn't even name five owners in the NFL. The only ones I can name are the historic ones that have been around since the old days of the AFL and NFL. I couldn't name five GMs in the NFL. I don't even, I haven't heard half of them talk. That's the problem with this team. And it, you know, it's sad but true. And I'm always DC for life. I'm going down with the ship. As you can see in the cave, all I got left are memories. Memories of Super Bowl champion, 
that I was at least able to see. But I look at my son, he's not so lucky. He's not so lucky because I don't know if this changes. The only way it's going to change is if Jerry changes. That's where the change has to be. It has to be with the ownership. They have to put things in place to create accountability. They don't necessarily, like I said, it's not going out and getting the high-priced guys, but you have to be active in free agency to get those mid-tier guys. Get the blue, like the Kendricks. That was a good signing, but it was only one. It was only one. And you look at this team, the defense yesterday, they did, they did their job. We know they're depleted. They did enough, but it's really on, I hate to say it, it's on Dak Prescott, and I know you're missing a receiver. I know we don't have the running game, but you saw early on in that game, they got some flow. They were dumping passes off this, and it, it was going, and then it just, in the third quarter, it stonewalls. That's on, that's on the offense. That's on the head coach. I mean, Dak Prescott, and then for him to say what he said on the sidelines, I don't blame him. I mean, you don't. You, you know, you're in the heat of the moment. You're not thinking there's cameras everywhere. So I'm not going to criticize. I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to do all that stuff because of what he said. I think it's funny. I think it's true. And then maybe they need to hear that. Maybe tough love is really what this team needs. Maybe they need a reality check. But the trade deadline's coming. Now Jerry says they're looking. I think that's all lip service. They're not going to do anything, in my opinion, to change the roster. And really, what are you going to get now? There's really, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot that you're going to be able to get. Everything that I'm hearing, there's just not going to be those guys that is going to make that big of a change. They put a lot of pressure on these rookies. I'm not killing Guyton. I'm not going to kill BB. BB's played well. I'm not going to kill Carson. I'm not going to kill all these young players that are put in a position where they've got to be stars now. They've got to be impact guys now. There's a learning curve. I mean, Guyton, he's had some ups and downs, but that's what you're going to get. And you have to know that. So you've got to adjust your offense. You've got to adjust your play calling. The quarterback's got to adjust the clock in his head, knowing that they're going to have some struggles with some young guys. And it's just the way it goes. It's really, like I said, it's really disappointing. It's not the losses, like I say, it's how they lose. And uh, yesterday was a game that, you know, wasn't confident they'd go in and win. But Atlanta did about exactly what I thought they would do. They didn't throw the ball all over the Cowboys. They didn't really even run all over the Cowboys. They had good runs, but for the grand scheme of things, we didn't give up a 100-yard rusher, and we didn't give up 300 yards passing. That's a win for this defense. Let's just be honest with ourselves the way they are. And then you've got these injuries. Bland is out. Parsons is out. Tank is out. Williams is out. You know, Nealon is out. I mean, you are absolutely depleted on defense, and... What did they do to try and improve it? You know, you saw the Chiefs go out and make a move for a DN. I mean, try something, but it's the same old story. We like our guys. We're doing, it's a lip service that Jerry keeps selling. And I tell you what, this is the first time since back in the Parcells time that I've seen Cowboys Nation really turn, really turn. And it's a good thing because the only way that you're going to get to Jerry is if he hears it, he sees it, he feels it from the Cowboys. He has an ego. Trust me. He has it. Why do you think our running game is where it's at? Because his ego does not want to admit that he made a mistake in the offseason by A, not drafting a running back, B, not getting a free agent uh, running back. So he's digging his heels in. He likes his guys. He likes his running backs, even though I think we all know the running back situation has been probably the worst we've seen since th since that time with Hamburg. Let's just be honest. Um, Rico ran the ball well. Rico was the number one running back in that game and performed well, did what he had to do. So why didn't they do that sooner? I don't know. Is it to appease certain people, to appease certain players? It's just, it's, it, the whole season has been an absolute disaster. It's been mind boggling. And me, you know, I love bringing that hype, but how the hell do you bring hype to, to what we're seeing here right now? I mean, and I don't know if it's going to get much better. I said we had to go 2-2 two two in the next four games. Well, we're 0-2. That means they're going to have to beat Philly at home, and they got to beat the Texans at home just to even stay in the mix. 
I watched the Philly game yesterday. Philly's defense, not very good. But Barkley's running the ball like he's never run the ball before. So that doesn't bode well for, for this Cowboys defense. And our offense isn't good enough to even compete. And we don't even know if Dak Prescott's going to play. I doubt he's going to play. I doubt it. I just don't, I don't see it happening. Um, the line already jumped up. I mean, we're home team underdog six and a half. So it's not looking good. And then you're going to get Cooper Rush. Would you rather have Cooper Rush or would you have Trey Lance? I said at the beginning of the season, me, I'll take Trey Lance. Because Trey Lance can run the ball. And we don't have the best offensive line right now. So I'd rather have Trey Lance out there with his legs. Put him out there and just roll the dice. What do you got to lose? Um, you, you know what you got with Cooper Rush. You know where the ceiling is at. The defense isn't good enough to support Cooper Rush. The offensive weapons aren't enough to support Cooper Rush right now. Um, we're one-dimensional. So why not get Trey Lance in there and at least he's got the legs that are going to be able to sustain some drives and you know, maybe steal a win or two. I don't know. Or they just keep losing. And I know we get that high draft pick, but they got to do something with that draft pick. They're going to have to do something with those draft picks to turn it. But you can't rely on the draft only because we're going to be right back where we started. You have to be able to get free agents. They got to change the philosophy of what they're doing because it ain't working. It hadn't worked in damn near 30 years, this philosophy. You have got to be active in free agency. And like I said, they don't have to go out and get world beaters. They don't have to go get the biggest names. It's not the most talented team that wins all the time. It's a team that comes together. It's the team that plays the best as a team. Unselfish guys. That's what this team is missing. Unselfish guys that do their job. Lunch pail, blue collar, like my man Eugene Lockhart says on my, um, when it comes in the Cowboys cave on the podcast, you just need guys who are hungry hungry for wins and you win in Dallas you're a made man I mean that's just look at those teams that won Super Bowls you've got guys that still do appearances you got guys still hosting tailgate parties you got special teams guys that you know like Kenny Gant I see him out at the stadium all the time he was a special teams guy for two Super Bowls but he had the shark dance all that he's a made man you win a Super Bowl in Dallas you become a made man that's what these players, that's, that's where their mindset's got to be because after the game, you got opportunity when your game is over to continue to make money. So I just had to get this off my chest. We're going to be live tonight. I'm going to have to hear Jimmy's mouth, my Falcon, my Falcon friend. They got us. I don't know if it's a great victory for them, but they've struggled against us in the past, so I'm sure he's feeling good about it, and I, I'd be happy with any win. My Canes are 9-0. I'm going to focus on that. Going to see if... The Cowboys can somehow have just a little bit of respect. A little bit of respect. Maybe this is, you got to hit rock bottom to get things back. Jerry Jones isn't at rock bottom yet. He needs to get to rock bottom. We got to make sure he gets to rock bottom. So I would just say this, Cowboys Nation, you just got to keep the pressure on. You just got to keep the pressure on. And it is unfortunate. I go into every game wanting to win. I know some people want to tank. That's fine. But... I can't sit and watch football and be happy my team loses. I can't watch football hoping my team loses. Otherwise, I'll just get out on the boat, enjoy my Sunday, which I should have done yesterday. The weather was perfect and not have to sit through it. But that ain't going to happen. I want the Cowboys to win. Let the chips fall where they may when the season's over, and then we'll figure this thing out. So I just wanted to drop this quick video. Appreciate all the support. I know it's hard times. We've talked about the hard times being a Cowboys fan. This is going to be it because the teams have been waiting, and they love to pounce on the Cowboys. You see it all the time. You've even got Giants fans trying to talk trash to the Cowboys when they're the worst team in the NFL. But it's the life we live as a Cowboys fan. We got thick skin. We can handle it, and hopefully brighter days are ahead. I appreciate it. Make sure if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe. Make sure you hit the like. We are live. We're going to be therapeutic to you guys. This is going to be therapy in session on Mondays, on Wednesdays. Greg and I, we do our shows on Sundays, so we're going to keep bringing the content. Maybe I just need to start going back. You know, it's going to always wait till the off season to get some interviews, get some guys. Talk some football, but maybe we need to start that sooner. You can get their opinion on what the hell's going on with this franchise. So 
I appreciate it. Thank you, Cowboys Nation. Hopefully to see you guys live tonight. I'd love to say, can you dig it? But I can't dig nothing right now.